All right. So today we're moving a uh, million and a half dollars worth of car through the snow to the mud to building three. And our first challenge is getting Drew's uh, car running. Are you still running on E85? Yeah. Oh, perfect. E85 in the winter. It's gonna be great. Big injectors don't really mix. Yeah. So, and E85 turns into uh, paste. Not paste. It was a very high emission temperature. All right, so this is my farmhouse Airbnb. And we live about 10 miles up a dirt road that way. So when we moved here, we realized we never get to drive our cars. So when I bought this property, start renting out, we decided to build this building so that we could store our cars here. And now we drive down off the mountain, burp, 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 burp. we park here and we can take our 911s out for the day and then put them back. Um, but I think now it's time to move them to the new build site. Uh, all the police here are very, the police here are very, uh, if you're from Montana, uh, you're pretty much fine. And then, as long as you're not being a maniac. And then, uh, generally, if you say you work for me, I've had a lot of employees get let go. So, yeah, cops are good around here. All right, update. The only thing that started was the old lawnmower. We're gonna go to my house, we're gonna grab keys, we're gonna try to get one of these cars started, and then we're gonna go get kerosene. kerosene, drop a car, come back and try to start your car again. Yeah. Party. Come on, just do it. Just pretend like you're not dead. Oh wait, we got like lights and stuff on. I bet it will. You bet a dollar it will? Yeah. I'm gonna bet a dollar it won't. All right? Oh, let's do this. oh wow, I think you're gonna get a dollar from me. leave that open? Yeah. I'm gonna leave my lawnmower running. Uh, if someone wants to come steal my lawnmower. The address is... I mean, it'd just be a weird thing to do right now in the winter, right? To steal a lawnmower? I owe you a dollar, too. Shit. So I'm gonna keep kicking it and flush it, but I like this. This makes it uh well, that would be a little wobbly. This makes it exciting, right? It's like those boats in Africa and shit where they load cars on and the and the boards snap and the car falls in the ocean. Go on, go on.
So I bought a Cayman S, a 2006 Cayman S. So that was like my nice starter. And then after that, I got the white 911 so that we could do Porsche tour uh, from Vegas to North Carolina to, for him to get married. I think the, the day after Dana, did she win or she play second? second? She played second in Olympia. We got in cars and then every day we drove eight hours and then we did an eight hour signing, drove eight hours did, and all the way to your wedding. It's pretty amazing. And then we had to drive them all the way back to Pennsylvania. So we just bought cars and just racked miles on them. We did our little mini tour. So GT3 was next. So the 993 for a while. I sold the 993 back when we moved. Regretted it, obviously. Then I bought, then I bought this guy. I bought that in Pennsylvania and then drove back that back to Montana. And then I bought the GT2 RS. And I haven't bought anything in a very long time. is like the nicest thing I've ever owned in my whole entire life. So it just makes me nervous all the time. I try to remind myself that it's just a fucking car, but it's hard. It's hard to think of it as just a car. The parking lot was paved. This is probably a little excessive, but once again, I'm not used to having nice things. Like lip smash out of the way, like have a big crack in it. I can kick it for you if you want just to. Like the 997 is like put together by zip ties and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Slide off the road, it's like, yeah, this is what I do. Nine, nine, or a 911 Turbo was my dream car. So pretty much um, there's two things I saw my dad do growing up. I saw my dad leave at 5 a.m. and go to work. And I saw him get home at like seven o'clock and not like his job. And he always dreamed of owning an ice cream store, like a, like a little ice cream hut, I don't know why. And he always took the first couple steps to getting an ice cream hut. And he would like buy like little sample cones and stuff like that, but he never took the leap. And he always talked about, since I was young, um, one of his professors at Wake Forest drove a 911 and he drove in the 911 or drove the 911. And he's like, it's the dopest car ever. And he always told me when he retired, he was gonna get a 911. And that was like growing up, it was like my dad's gonna get a 911 when he retires and he's gonna open an ice cream shop. And for a lot of people, it's hard to like take those giant steps to chase your dreams. So I saw him never open an ice cream shop and then he bought an S2000. S2000 is a great fucking car, but it's not a 911. Which is sort of what made me really, really decide like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all the risks. Like he taught me the hard work, he taught me responsibility, he taught me playing it safe and everything like that. But the one thing I always saw him never do is to take that risk. So, dream car was just a 911. Just a 911, that's since I was like four years old. I wanted a yellow 911, I don't know why I wanted yellow. But uh, I actually wanted a GT3 RS was my dream car because I never thought I could get this. So no, this wasn't my dream car. A GT3 RS was on my vision board. This just popped into my life. Must have got lucky. <laughs> what an asshole. Look at this. I'm supposed to have this. This is supposed to be pristine. I, I grew up not having a lot of money um, and I, I was just always taught that credit was not good. You know, credit was, uh, was something that could get you in trouble. And then 
watching some other people do business and like lose everything and get cars repoed early on, I just said, if I can't afford it, I'm not gonna buy it. So I only buy things that I have enough money to buy. Um, now that I'm getting deeper in real estate, I'm realizing that there's a fine balance between what you can, um, what you, what you can finance versus write-offs versus uh, what makes it quote unquote free money and how to make your money do more. But then something like COVID hits. So that would have made a lot of sense for Airbnb, but my Airbnb shut down for three months. So if I wasn't so capital rich in those, I would have been in a lot of trouble, right? That being said, I try to buy really smart vehicles. So you notice I have a lot of 997s. Um, 997 manuals, they're the last manuals that uh, were made in turbos. Uh, after that, turbo is all PDK, so it's all bip, 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 this is PDK. Um, so they're gonna go up in value. They're already going up in value. So instead of having my money in the bank account, I have them in a fun toy. Uh, this, this is a risky one. Um, so far I have not lost any money, so I've pretty much had a free car. Um, it's more or less just transferring money to one account, and then if I want it transferred back and the car to go away, I can get all of my money back. Um, so this was a very strategic move too, but a little, little bit more risky than the 997s. 997s, if you can find a manual 997 right now um, with under 50,000 miles, you will not lose money if you get it for no brokerage price. Just like uh, everything in my life, we got 75% of the way there. Decide not to bring all the cars, uh, so we still have a bunch of cars spread out, but I think we got the important ones. And Danish drift car, which is really important. Um, we are training in here right now. Eventually this is gonna be just cars, boat. It's gonna be fun storage. And then training will move over to the gym. That'll happen when this parking lot gets paved because right now this mud festival outside is not ideal for anything. But I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you guys wanna know anything else, drop questions below and we'll make some videos. I just wanna throw it on cruise, be alright too. War don't let you hang loose, can't be with your dice.